this is twin motion um, last tutorial we just kind of showed you if you're a total beginner how to get started where to get it and talked a little bit about the interface and some of the things that you can do um, because it's really not that complicated but it does help to kind of know some of the nuances and so hopefully that gave you a background on things but next I want to take it to the next level and just show you what you want to probably know which is how do you do this with your own model so um, first and foremost down here in the lower left if you highlight this little purple arrow here you got a big import icon you can't miss it um, so let's just go ahead and I've got this modern house FBX that I'm gonna bring in um, you can bring in a lot of different native file formats um, you know I, I work with cinema 4d so you can bring directly in from cinema 4d um, FBX SketchUp um, you can use wavefront but um, this one's just happened to be an FBX so uh, one of the things to keep in mind here on this options arrows it's very helpful to keep the hierarchy just allows you to kind of see things so they don't get collapsed collapse again just means you've got to have this one bulky model and it can be harder to work with when you're adding materials so I'm gonna go ahead and keep the hierarchy and I'll just click fix UV and texture and I'm gonna click OK and I'm gonna use the imported material otherwise it comes in just completely black this will just allow you to see it better so I'm using the imported material and I brought in my model okay so I don't have any textures but why would you need them because you're gonna do all this very quickly and easily inside of twin motion um, so uh, up here the little right facing arrow just click that drop down and come into our materials window and let's start with just getting some reflective glass in our scene um, now in our um, main viewer window down here at the bottom we've got these icons um, right now it's set to apply to object normally it defaults to replace material and even though you've got this hierarchy and if you like click on one it would make sense that if you just drag that material in that it would just replace that material however it's affecting my entire model and that's that's not what I want you know I don't want to have a glass house um, so what you're gonna want to gonna want to make sure you do is, is put this to apply to object and now when you bring this in you will just be replacing just the windows as soon as I drop that in I get a nice list of icons here I can affect the color make it more of a blue tint if I wanted to I can adjust the opacity make it even harder to see through there the metallicness is really just like how much that looks super reflective and with glass it's hundred percent and then I can make it two-sided um, which is kind of cool for maybe not for glass but for um, the interior of the house and the, the other materials as we keep going so let's just start with that for now um, and I'm gonna do the same thing I'm just gonna grab this concrete this exposed egg no let's go with like a fine concrete and I'm just gonna throw that on the outside and I'm gonna kind of zoom in here a little bit so you see the materials there I can change the cut again the color a little bit for some reason I wanted a little different tint um, or I can just change the grayscale um, I can make it more specular or reflective if I want to um, but the big one you're probably gonna want to mess with a lot as you do this is the scale so if you're bringing in a model that you didn't spend a lot of time making sure that the dimensions uh, were going to match twin motion you're gonna to want to probably up the uh, the scale amount so that your material looks uh, matches what you're seeing over here so when you hover over you know for instance a concrete slab that's what it should look like on the wall but if I drag that in here you'll notice my scale is very small but you can affect that very quickly uh, by upping the scale and now you kinda get I mean this kinda looks like a prison but um, now you've got that that look that you want matching what you saw in the viewer window um, so we're gonna do that a lot um, I'm gonna kinda work my way around the front of the house here I guess to the this would be the back of the house um, there's some great wood textures here but same thing if I add that on I've got this really small fine detailed wood but to get it to look realistic we're gonna up that scale to something like that now we're looking much better um, 
you can even go further with the settings um, if you wanted to play with the, the bump um, the glow and you know in this case I do want to make it two-sided um, and if you at any point skip a step and want to go back just click this little dropper and click on whatever material you want to edit and then I'll just bring you right back to the material so for instance I didn't make this two-sided I do want to make this two-sided so I'm gonna just go ahead and check that on uh, let's see here let's grab uh, let's go back to our move tool and let's just grab a I don't know what would be a garage door maybe something kind of plastic um, it could be this, nah, not non slip floor let's just do like a rubber material that we can play with a little bit so there's my garage door um, same thing I'm gonna make it two-sided and I'm gonna de deselect the uh, there we go um, if I come in here I can adjust the metallicness I can make it glow a little bit if I wanted to maybe something like that um, and if you wanted for some reason if you know if you're an architect and you want to highlight a specific region of a house you can always make this x-ray and now you know you can go around and see those see what's been affected from every angle of the house so that way as you're as you're going through and you want a material and you, and you feel like you've missed something x-ray might help you out a little bit with that um, so that's really cool but now we want to fill in a little bit of the natural features of the house make it blend in a little bit so let's go back into our um, context here which is some of our settings for painting and scattering and I'm just gonna find a, a grass that I'm gonna drop in and I'm going to update my diameter to something that fits inside of this area and I'm just gonna paint inside and if you make a mistake you can always delete these some of these are creeping onto the pavement that I don't want um, and then when you're done we can just up that density fill that grass in real good and then um, I'm going to come back and I'm going to click my eraser tool and just kind of get rid of some of the things on the side. Um, it's not perfect. This is just a tutorial. But we can leave that as is for now. And it's just so easy to jump around in this program. Um, I can go right back into my materials. And I, I do want to add my slabs and create kind of like this, I guess, this slab driveway. Um, Something like that, super modern looking house. And maybe add like a fine concrete walkway. And then maybe I'd fill, maybe I'll go back and go back into my context, vegetation paint, and I'll just continue filling in grass in this area. Something like that. And if you feel like the grass that you're adding is not allowing, it's not giving you a good representation. Like you see at that point, it starts to disappear. You can always click on these three little lines here and we can go in here and change our preferences and just click on fading grass and change it to far. And now I've got a much longer view of where my grass would be. Um, it does add a little bit more to your, um, or slows down your computer's performance a little bit if you're doing a ton of grass. But for me, I'm just, you know, we can toggle between that a little bit. I'm just going to have that on. Um, and yeah, I'm starting to got very quickly gotten a good look to my house. Um, my ground is still a stone floor, so I'm just going to go back to uh, vegetation, landscape, sorry, materials and ground. And I'm just going to throw a grass on there. And then we can always just click on our model if we want, drag it down. But we also have to make sure that we've uh, highlighted everything so it all goes down with it. Whoops. Might just be easier to bring my starting ground up a little bit. Something like that. And then obviously we're gonna wanna kinda just fill in the background of this. Let's say this is the view I'm going for. Um, you could always just click and drag in a tree and put it wherever you want and you can age it however you want whatever age you want um, you can 
adjust the season on the fly. Um, but you can also, as we talked about before, paint these items in. So throw this in and just uh, maybe I want to paint some trees over here. I'm gonna up the diameter. Something like that. And then we can also just click on that material again and make it a much more dense look. So I just finished going through and playing with everything and, and making it look like something that I might want to actually export and use for um, potentially a client or just my, my portfolio. Um, I adjusted the season a little bit on the trees so it looks a little bit more fall-like. Um, and I actually also added this little road here in the foreground um, just to kind of make it look like it was on a street. Um, so there's some other things I'll show you in some other tutorials, but just wanted to show you just how close we were to creating something this realistic. It's really just unbelievable what you can do with this program. So I hope that helped you further your understanding a little bit more of um, some of the concepts inside Twin Motion. Um, click that subscribe button, stay tuned for more, and thanks for watching.